Hey friends, welcome back to Fig and Farm at Home. It's Tuesday, you know what that means. I am answering a listener's question, and I'm trying to do it speedy quick, like 10 minutes or less. I don't know about you, but I've been timing, and I have been about 12, 11, over. we're doing pretty good. All right, today you are not going to want to miss. This is all about how to update your kitchen, give it a little refresh on a budget. Do I have ideas? I sure do. Stick around and listen. Enjoy today's show. It's Quick Tip Tuesday. You have questions, I have answers, and I am so glad to be answering them for you today. If you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm. Send me an email at Fig and Farm at home at gmail.com or join the Facebook group and ask there. bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Let's hop to it. Let's answer your question. And if you find value in this, I'm sure someone else will too. So make sure you share with a friend. Kyra is wondering if I have any creative options for updating, refreshing a kitchen on a budget. Kyra, I sure do. And I'm going to give you two categories of this refresh. Each one is budget in their own way. And some of the options are actually free. So we're going to start with the easy, the easy DIY. Anyone can do it. Are you ready? I think I have about four. Here we go. The first thing that will give your kitchen an automatic update is to clean off the kitchen counters and clean off the fridge. Yes, you've heard that right. How many of us have appliances on our counters? A lot. How many of us have more appliances than we need on our counters? How many of us have utensil containers and spices and piles of things that are kitchen related, but are just kind of overflow from the cabinets themselves. Yeah. Are you raising your hand? I was raising my hand every once in a while. I fall into that category. It usually lands after a, a big Costco trip or around the holidays when produce is abundant, when fruit is abundant, or actually that's just pretty much it. I, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. I don't like an overly crowded kitchen counter. And that is one of the the number one things you can do to make your space feel updated is to actually find homes for the things that are there. Now, if you're wondering, but Danny, how do you do that? I mean, it's on the counter for a reason. Let me give you a suggestion. When you have appliances that are sitting on the counter, even though they are maybe daily use, can you find space for them in the cupboards below or above your counters? Do you have, first of all, let's ask this question. Do you have cupboards? Yep, you probably do. What is inside of those cupboards? That's where I want you to concentrate. I want you to concentrate on what is inside of there that you don't use very often, that you haven't used for the last six months or more. Let's bless that to someone else. Let's give it away. Let's donate it. Let's sell it and recoup a little bit of cash for a rainy day. And then you've just made space. Put the thing that you use most often out front, like your blender. You make smoothies every every day. Awesome. Good for you. I'm sure they're delicious. Put the blender in the front of the cabinet below. Toast? Yep. Put it in in front of the cabinet below. Put things that you use rarely in the back. But get rid of the things that you don't use that are taking up space. All right. Number one, easiest, cheapest way that you can update your kitchen. You are going to thank me, I promise. Number two, change the hardware on your cabinets. What's happening with those? Can you give it an update by maybe choosing a hardware that's a little bit more modern? Maybe you recently painted your cabinets and you haven't haven't changed the hardware. Maybe you're using the same old hardware that it came with. Change it out. Swap it out. Number three, can you, with the open space now that you've created, can you create vignettes, purposeful, intentional vignettes with the items that are out on your counter? Here's what I mean. If you make coffee every day, can you make a coffee corner, a coffee station? Yeah, how cute would that be? If you have your coffee pot, maybe you have a small Keurig. Do you have a little tray or could you have a little tray next to it that has your coffee grinder or maybe a, I guess that would be for a coffee pot, right? I don't have a Keurig, I have a coffee pot. So, but I'm gonna go back to the Keurig because I bet a lot of you have one of those. So imagine your tray and you have now a glass container with cute little coffee pods. You have just made your storage accessible and adorable. And right next to it, maybe you put out your four favorite coffee cups. You put them, you stack them. They're not just laying flat. You're stacking them. You've got a couple cute little spoons. Maybe you even have your cutie patootie sugar jar. 
I have one that should be out on the counter. It is not, but it is a black and white striped sugar jar with a wooden lid. I absolutely love it. It is cute enough to be out in a coffee corner or a coffee vignette. Can you create other vignettes in your kitchen? Yeah, absolutely. Think about cake stands or trays as the the way that you corral the things in your vignette. For example, I have one in my mini coffee corner. I have an espresso machine, and so I have that in one corner, and I have a cake stand where a few of my coffee syrups sit. Around Christmas time, I pull down the cute little Christmas mugs that my boys have received from grandma, and I have a teeny tiny little container that has some extra little teas or ciders or cocos, things that the boys like to make on their own. It's a drink center. It's a drink station. And then, of course, you can always swap out towels. You can always swap out soap canisters to make them a little bit more easy on the eyes than what you currently have. Hey friend, have you ever wanted to go refresh your home, gone to the home decor store, maybe you're at Target, and have been stuck in indecision for so long that the employees, the sweet employees in their red Target shirts are now starting to bring you pillows, chairs, even snacks because they think you might be staying the night. (laughs) Oh friend, have you ever finally found that perfect piece that your home desperately needed only to bring it home and think, huh? doesn't quite go (laughs) and then needed to return it the next week or even worse missed the return date and now you're stuck with the silly thing or you have to sell it on Facebook marketplace to recoup a fraction of what you paid are you constantly wondering why home decorating is so hard and so overwhelming but why others make it look so easy and friend are you looking over your shoulder right now thinking wait where is Danny does she know she she is speaking directly to me (laughs) Oh, do you want to know why? Because I was you. Not too long ago, I was thinking the exact same thing. Shopping was overwhelming. It wasn't fun. Even when we needed the things, not just wanted the things, it wasn't fun because it was so overwhelming. There are so many choices. When you want a throw pillow, why are there 50,000 throw pillows? Why? And how do you learn to recognize that those pillows are cute, but they don't belong in my home? And how is it that you can create a room that flows seamlessly room to room to room inside of your house without it looking janky? How do we do that? A friend, you have options. You can keep piecing together on your own, asking friends, listening to the podcast, looking at YouTube, finding the blogs, looking at HGTV. You can do all of that on your own. Or you can take Home Design 101. It was created for you in mind. Not so that you could become a designer yourself, though wouldn't that be awesome? but so that you could learn how to create a home that you love, a home that you love coming home to, a home that reflects your style and tells your story. We talk about so many things inside of Home Design 101, from how to understand what your room needs, the purpose of the room, before we even begin to make it beautiful. We create an overall plan and the action steps that it takes in order to reach that plan, the color palette to create a cohesive home that flows seamlessly room to room. You learn to create a mood board so that you can see the pieces that you want to bring in and how they might mingle together without ever having to purchase anything first, bypassing that dreaded buy and return, buy and return cycle that we are all so stuck on. You learn how to identify what your unique design style is so that you're not copying someone else's ideas off of Pinterest. You get support along the way with every other week live group coaching sessions inside of our Facebook community. Friend, it is all waiting for you and it's been designed for you, a busy mama with a real home and a real budget. You can sign up today by coming to figandfarmathome.com forward slash home hyphen design hyphen 101. I'll see you in class. All right, we are moving on to the more moderate DIYs, a little bit harder, a little bit more detail oriented and maybe even a little bit more expensive, but they are still budget friendly. The first one, you know what I'm going to say is to paint your cabinets. Now here's, here is the, the clicker. I want everyone to stop and listen. I I almost said stop, drop and roll. (laughs) You can tell I used to hang out with first graders. Okay. Before you go and buy the paint for your kitchen cabinets, before you go and say, but Danny said I could. No, no, no. I don't want you to do that unless 
you have had experience painting something else, refinishing something else and doing it, not just one project, not just two projects, multiple projects and someone you can talk to about how you can troubleshoot if you run into problems along the way. Have I painted my kitchen cabinets? Yes, I have. Have I repainted them twice? Yes, I have. And all of my bathroom cabinets. However, I have years and years of experience refinishing furniture. This is something I've done for my shop, something I've done as a side hustle. And it's not necessarily something that you should just just rush into. Can you do it? Can you learn how to do it? Absolutely, yes. But you need to go slow in this process. Okay, Kyra, you got that? (laughs) You're not going to go and run to the store and grab the paint, right? Okay, number two change out your backsplash. This is a great way for you to update your the look of your kitchen by changing it out. Is this a DIY? Absolutely. Is it something that is moderate? Absolutely. It is not the easiest DIY you can do. It is also not the hardest. Have we done it? Yes, we've done it multiple times in multiple homes. Laid tile both on the floor, laid it on the wall, laid it on our chimney out back. Yes, and it is something that you can absolutely do. You do need some special tools in case you have to cut tile, but even that is easier, easy enough to learn how to do. Again, this is one of those things where I would suggest trying it in a space where maybe it's not front and central. Trying it maybe in a bathroom, maybe your guest bathroom, maybe your kiddo's bathroom, somewhere where it is absolutely okay to give it a try and experience that, but maybe not where everyone is going to be coming and gathering. They're going to notice your your first DIY project. <laughs> All right, the next one is to change out your pendant lights. Do you have pendant lights over a bar or maybe even a chandelier that's hanging a, a bigger a bigger chandelier that's hanging over your kitchen table or your bar? Is this a DIY? Yes, it is. However, now I am not a licensed electrician. Mm-hmm though I grew up with one, my my dad was, it doesn't make me qualified by any means. But it is something you can learn to do. It is something that you should always make sure that you are checking with someone you know. If you know an electrician, have them over, have them teach you how to do it. But it is something that you can, with safety, following the rules, following the guidelines, following the instructions you can do on your own. All right, Kyra, did I I inspire you or scare you? (laughs) I gave you lots of warnings and I'm giving you warnings, not because I don't think you can do it, Kyra, but because I want to make sure that you start small so that you have success with your current skill set. All of these things are teachable. All of these things you are able to apply on your own. All of these things you might be able to trade a skill for a skill with a neighbor who knows how to do it. If you have a friend or a neighbor who knows how to change lighting, trade a skill, have them teach you how to do it. And you'll teach them how to, I don't know, grill salmon to perfection, whatever it is, but be resourceful, know your limits and be smart. Those are always my rules when I do a DIY project and ask Mr. Fig and Farm. That's, that's my fourth rule. (laughs) All right, Kyra, I hope that was helpful. If you friends have a question, just like Kyra, you know how to ask me, email me at hello at figandfarmathome.com. Pop into my DMs on Instagram or join the Facebook group at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. All right, friends, until next time, I'll see you soon.